Hi, today I'm going to show you guys how to do a relative efferent pupillary defect. Hi, I'm Dr. Cheng. I'd like to check your pupillary direction. So first of all, to do a RAPD, we need to dim the room light. And then we have to send at the patient's side and instruct patient to look at the distant target. Can you look at the distant target? This is to avoid the accommodation. After that, you should shine a light underneath to illuminate both eye pupils. So first of all, we need to check the direct and consensual light reflex. So we can shine the light over the right eye and we observe for both eye pupil constriction. This means that both uh, the right eye having a, a good direct and consensual light reflex. After that, we shine the light over the contralateral eye to see whether both eye is equally constricted or not. After we have uh, examined the direct and consensual light reflex, we should swing the light for at least 2 seconds and swing to the other eye and swing back to the um, first eye and we observe whether there is any re re relative efferent pupillary defect. We have learned on how to perform an RAPD. Next, we need to know how to grade them. Currently, there are many grading systems of RAPD available but the one commonly used is a simple grading which consists of grade 1, 2, 3 and 4. We need to know that the higher the grade of the RAPD, the more discrepancy of the relative afferent pupillary defect. So uh, to understand the grading, uh, let us just assume that the left eye is the one having the RAPD. So for grade 1, they usually will have a very weak initial pupillary constriction followed by a greater redilatation. For grade 2, there will be an initial pupillary stall and then followed by a greater redilatation. For grade 3 RAPD, there will be an immediate pupillary dilatation, which in grade 4, they won't have any reaction to light and the pupil will appear to be amoretic, which is fixed dilated. So there are many causes of RAPD. I will divide it into either it is an optic nerve pathology or a retina pathology. For optic nerve pathology, it can be either due to optic neuritis, any form of optic neuropathy, either is compressive causes, traumatic, ischemic and others. Glaucoma can also lead to RAPD if it presents in an asymmetry pattern. For retina pathology, examples of um, Retina diseases that can have RAPD are the retina detachment, or the ischemic retina such as central retina artery occlusion, central retina vein occlusion. I hope this video will help you understand on how to perform and to create the relative afferent pupillary defect. Thank you.